we are introducing a new concept on this channel, which is travel hacking for resellers. We've never done a trip like this before and we wanted to for a while where we travel to a different area to go sourcing and try to make it as cost effective as possible. I'm gonna take you guys along with us on this trip. Uh, we are gonna track everything that we spend and anything that we spend for this trip that is different and outside of the norm what we would usually buy we are going to keep track of and we're also going to keep track of our estimated profits for each of the items that we get and see if we break even if we are in the negative or if we end up being able to make more and see if it is viable to take these kinds of sourcing trips and still make money So far, we have been able to make the trip uh, pretty cost effective because the place that we are going to be staying at, we are actually gonna be staying at for about a week for completely free. And I will talk about that later, but we did have to come a day early and pay for a hotel due to inclement weather and just making sure we were going to arrive on time. And so, so far we have paid for a hotel and that was a little less than $200. Vaso used up a tank and a half of gas. So we spent roughly $40 in gas already. I'll talk about some of the other expenses later, but right now we are sitting at a car wash. Car wash. <laughs> because there is so much salt on the car uh, that it is getting all over everything. So we'll include that in the expenses. All right, so we just arrived at our essentially Airbnb and I am super excited. The place is really, really nice. And as I mentioned, we are staying here for free. I won't go too much into this, but in case you want kind of like a travel hacking option um, for places you can stay at for free, let me tell you a little bit about this app that I am using in order to stay at places like this for free. This is completely not sponsored, although, if you are interested, there will be uh, a referral link below where you get something, I get something, but totally up to you. But I thought I would mention it because as resellers um, traveling for business trips, saving money and trying to cut expenses is really gonna maximize your profits. So this is my first time ever using um, this app. It's called Trusted House Sitters. And essentially it's like Airbnb, except in exchange for paying to stay somewhere each night, you instead, do pet sitting. This is uh, Jerry behind the scenes here, so cute. And the way this app works is you basically apply to house and pet sit. There's all kinds of places you can go, um, not just in the US, but other countries as well. And you apply to sit, you have to be chosen out of everybody who applies. But um, if you are chosen to house sit, then they get to have house sitting for free and you get to stay somewhere for free. One thing that's really cool about this is that uh, there's a mixture of like how many animals you have to take care of, what the responsibilities are. I personally am looking for things that are really low maintenance and for uh, people who are okay with us doing a little bit of traveling. Um, and you know, obviously not so much that we're not paying attention to their dogs or we can't take them out, um, but ones that are okay with us taking short stints around the city and not having to be at the location the entire time, which like I said, this is the first one that I have ever done. And that's exactly what I was looking for when I wanted to get the first one under my belt. So we chose a location that's only about six hours from us. Location wise, it didn't really matter to me because I just wanted to test out this app, see how it worked and kind of, again, get one under my belt. So wherever the location was at, we just knew we were gonna thrift while we were there. So that is where we are at today. And I'm super excited because we just arrived. Uh, the owner of the house is super nice. She just left and responsibilities are really not that bad. Just have to walk him a couple times a day, make sure he gets fed and can go to the bathroom, give him some love and attention. But other than that, there's really not much I have to do. And this place is really, really nice. So we're staying here for free for, I think it's a total of six days. Yes, six total days. Uh, all for free, which is super cool. The app does require you to set up a profile, go through kind of a verification process, and also has different subscriptions uh, based on, I guess, what your travel needs are. But I can guarantee you, regardless of which subscription you pick, as long as you get one sit underneath of your belt, um, you are definitely going to be saving money. So this is a new app I'm trying, and I thought I would share it with you guys because I think it's really, really cool. There are a lot of other states that I really want to check out. And now that I know kind of how this works, I think I'm gonna start applying to places 
maybe monthly, at least quarterly. So as I mentioned, goal for this trip is to keep expenses extremely low. We did end up having to travel one extra day, like I mentioned, uh, before we were planning to, just to make sure we could arrive on time because there were some snowstorms. So I ended up having to pay for a travel day basically out of pocket because we had to stay at a hotel. The first day we're here, we traveled yesterday to get here. Um, but these are my expenses so far. We definitely were not very frugal when it came to eating out over the last day. We a couple nice restaurants, so I'm including that in our expenses. Um, but today we are going to try to cut back on that a little bit and go to a grocery store and get some stuff to make some meals, which I am not going to include costs for because if we were at home, I would be grocery shopping anyways. So for me, it's kind of a win-win that I'm staying at a place where I can cook and my expenses don't really change as far as that goes. So unless we eat out, I'm not going to include those in expenses because we'd already be paying for those. So we did stop at a Goodwill for about like 45 minutes yesterday. It was a real quick trip um, on the way here. And I'm going to share with you guys this thrift haul. This will be part one of this travel video. Um, I don't know how many parts there'll be, but I will keep you guys updated and continue doing videos um, until we figure out exactly how much we spent and how much we were going to make and if it was worth the trip. So this Goodwill we stopped at um, did not have a bunch of new racks out or anything and I, to be honest, didn't pay attention to color because I've never been there before. So I basically just walked the aisles and cherry picked anything that really stood out. Um, I did pick up some winter items, although I'm looking back thinking I probably shouldn't have done that because I've noticed a huge shift in things that are selling in my eBay and Poshmark store and people are starting to pick up warmer weather items. So for the rest of the thrifting trips, I'm really gonna try to focus on uh, staying true to like spring and summer. But obviously, if there are things that are comping really well and are big bolos uh, within the winter categories, I'm obviously going to get it. And that's what some of the stuff is here today. So let me go ahead and do a quick thrift haul of what we have so far. And then at the end of this video, I'll tell you guys where we are at as far as budgeting for this trip goes. All right, so this first one is a winter item, but this is a really great brand to pick up. It is called Dean's of Scotland, any kind of Irish or Scottish uh, wool brands I always look up. And this one I really wanted to get because it's in really great condition. There are a couple of like, I don't know what you would call them, spots where it's not a hole, but you can tell like the wool is um, not as full as it used to be, um, but otherwise in really fantastic condition. And the reason I decided to go ahead and risk it on this was because comps for this brand were still very, very good. And this is a very unique piece, has kind of a boiled wool front. And then look at these gorgeous, gorgeous sleeves. Um, it also has some really nice ornate buttons here. Um, I paid $4.39 for this. I think I was gonna list this for around $45 to $50. At the end of the video, like I said, I'll pop up um, a total of everything. This one I got uh, strictly off of style. This is a vintage or a Y2K brand called New York Girl. You can see it's kind of an older label. And I got this because it is a gorgeous like Southwestern Aztec toggle coat very great condition, really high quality. You can see all of the great uh, multicolor geometric pattern. And yeah, just really great condition. Like I said, toggle details. This one's a size 14, so it is a little bit bigger. Women's coats, I'm probably gonna list this for about 50 to 60 bucks. Just a very on-trend piece that I could not pass up. Paid $7.99 for that. All right, this next one is an American fighter hoodie. This stuff does not go for much, but it does have a good following. So whenever I find a more substantial piece like a hoodie, I always look it up. This is also a men's size extra large. Great condition, all over graphic. This is probably only gonna go for like 25 to 30, um, but good pickup and like I said, good comps. I paid 5.39 for that. All right, this is like a more spring summer piece that I thought would do well. This is the brand Horny Toad. It is a size extra small and it is new with tags. Um, it only retails for $49, but this brand has a pretty good following. I know I can at least get 25 to 30 for that and I paid 3.99. It's a Y2K piece. Um, this is missing a button, but I thought it was a good enough piece that it was worth picking up and risking. It is Abercrombie & Fitch. This is a men's, so super thick and heavy. 
kind of like varsity Henley sweater. It is very, very thick. I cannot explain to you how thick it is, um, but any kind of older Abercrombie fish stuff, what they spell out or like a patch like this, very, very trendy. I have no idea what I'm gonna list this for. Probably around somewhere between 40 and 50 bucks this is a J. Crew piece, woman's little sweater, size small. It is 100% cashmere. It's this really cute like baby pink. Kind of a boyfriend fit which is also really popular as well uh no idea on that probably 35. all right this one i took a little bit of a risk on as well a couple reasons i picked this up this is the brand bellagio which i'm not really familiar with but it's a men's size extra large it is vintage it's designed in italy and it is 100 mercerized cotton which if you guys didn't know that is what the kuji sweaters are made out of Plus, this has like a 3D knit vibe to it. It's definitely not 3D knit, but it does have that vibe to it. So hard to tell because the sun's in the background, but it's like a purple, black, blue, and white mix. Has these really cool sleeves as well. And it was just very Kooji vibes and that style is very popular. So I thought I would risk it. I paid $5.39 for that. I'm gonna list it probably for 40 to 50, maybe slightly higher. All right, one more bag. This is a Mountain Hardware men's fleece jacket. These have like, I don't even know, like a 400% sell through rate right now. Look up Mountain Hardware men's fleece jacket. This is a size medium and it is a little bit more of a substantial jacket too. Um, it has a lot of different like contrast details. The sleeves are really nice. They have zippers, zippers on the armpits. You can see just a lot of contrast here this one's in really great condition um let's see i paid six dollars nine cents for it and i am gonna list that probably for like 40 to 50 bucks like i said very high comps on that this one's more bread and butter it is south pole this is like a y2k inspired find it is just a thermal waffle knit men's graphic t-shirt Playing on the back, I'll probably only get 25 bucks for that, but it did have some good sell through rate comps. Same thing with this one, Wrangler fleece lined, men's larger size 2XL plaid jacket. Uh, great sell through rate on this. It's not going for much, probably 25 to 30. And honestly, looking back, I probably should have left this because it's such a thick piece. Um, and large and heavy that if it doesn't sell, it's gonna take up a lot of space. So I probably should have left that behind, but hopefully I can get it listed and then it'll sell super quickly. I paid $5.39 for that. And like I said, I'll flip it for 25 to 30. Harley Davidson, women's size large flannel. Also really great comps on Harley size large women's flannels. Has kind of a cool graphic on the back. This one will go for about 25. I paid 439. This is a new Bolo brand. It, it, or maybe not new, but new to me. It's called Our Legacy. I got something in wholesale of this brand. And so when I saw it again, I was like, that looks familiar. Let me look it up. Stuff sells for quite a bit. This is a women's kind of oversized pullover. I don't know if I call it a sweatshirt because it's linen, but sweatshirt vibes, long sleeve. I'm probably gonna list this for I don't know, somewhere between like 50 and $70. So that was a really great find. Paid $4.39 for that. This one's another wintry piece. This is a J. Jill. Um, I believe this is a size small. The reason I got this was mainly style based. It is like a sweater coat. It's got toggle. It's very like Southwestern bohemian. To me, very on, on trend, and it has a small amount of cashmere in it. So for that reason, I thought this would flip well. I gotta do some more comps on that, but just off the top of my head, I'm thinking like maybe 40 bucks for that. And last piece, Joe actually found this for me. This is a vintage Fieldmaster sweatshirt. Really great sell through rate on this. This one has a really good graphic as well. I think I'm gonna list this for around 35 to 40 bucks. So this was a really good pickup. Um, and I paid $5.39. All right, guys, so that is it for the first part of this. Like I said, we just arrived at the place we're gonna be staying. I'll put up on the screen, again, our expenses so far, and then how much I expect to sell all of this stuff for, and we'll see if I've broken even yet um, and how much we are expecting to make. Hopefully by the end of this trip, we will profit. But to be honest with you, 
This is kind of experimental because I've never done something like this before. Hope to do more trips like this in the future. If you guys want to follow along with the rest of this trip and you're not already, don't forget to subscribe down below and hit that notification bell. If you do that, you'll be notified every single time I post new content. Link for the Trusted House Sitters app will be down below if you guys are interested in checking that out. Like I said, um, I don't make any money off this. This video is not sponsored. I just think it's a really cool opportunity if it works for your own schedule and your own business. You save a lot of money by doing some house and some dog sitting, but getting to stay somewhere really nice for free. But that is it, you guys. I will see you all in the next one. Bye.